All right, folks, how are you all doing? It's time to get some valve clearances done on our GSXR 750. Uh, we're not going to just check them. We're actually going to check them and adjust them. So let's get going. So I have jumped ahead of you and removed the air box and the coil packs and the, the six bolt screws that hold the valve cover on there. Now the valve cover, sorry, may be a little stiff. So what you want to do is give it a little tap with a wooden side of a hammer or something like that. The wooden side, nothing hard or something plastic just to shock this loose and it'll, it'll pop off just like that. Let's go around the other side. So once that's loose, what you want to do is remove as many obstacles as possible. So I've disconnected the wiring harness. I'm going to remove the throttle bodies also. Then you need to remove these plugs from the side of the frame and I'll show you why. So with the plugs removed, you will then find a hole in your frame all the way through. So you can insert your screwdriver and locate it into the throttle body clamp in there. Twist that and it should, not come, it should come nice and loose. Now when you remove these, they will be stiff. So you need to give them a good old tug to get them out. So grab all the fuel rail and they're loose. So next we want to remove the throttle cable. So what we're going to be doing is 10 mil for that, 12 mil for these. I've already slackened them off, loosened it off just to get ahead of you. Very awkward with uh, one hand on it. There we go. Next thing I would greatly advise is that you remove all electrical connectors from the thermostat and also these vacuum solenoids. This has got to go so you've got space, you've got room to get into the cam chain tensioner. Right now with that out of the way we've got plenty more room to work in here so we're going to remove the spark plugs now. And this way as well when we remove the spark plugs we can check see what colour the plugs are. So the top one, I've loosened these off obviously they weren't like this. You might get a little bit of oil spillage but don't worry about it, you won't lose it all. Next we need to remove this cam chain guide here. And also I'm going to be very careful with this because we don't want to drop any of these bolts down so go very slowly when you get to the end and make sure you've got two hands on it. Remove them, get them out of the way. This one's a little bit awkward because it's down there. All right. uh, okay so next thing, now we can see the cam chain. I can also check that is under good tension. It feels quite good that. Now usually when I'm doing timing on any vehicle whatsoever, I want to see the uh, cams straight in front of my eyes. And then I want to look down at the flywheel notch mark thing. So I can see that everything's perfectly aligned. We don't want things to be off slightly or not lined up at all. But the problem is with this Suzuki, the frame is that bloody massive. And they've not got any holes in here, which would be ideal just to see where the timing marks are on the cam sprocket so that makes this extremely um, awkward and it makes it difficult for a beginner however they do they have machined thankfully some slots into the rear, rear of the cams here you may not see those we'll get to in a minute they have machined some slots into the, both cams there and you can align those in the direction they should be in order to check the timing or your valve clearances. Now, the problem with that is, uh, depending what angle you are looking at those cams, how do you know that they are perfectly aligned? To get top dead center, this must be here, okay? So what we're gonna do now is check it with the cams, make sure they're aligned also. Now we can't see the timing marks on these sprockets. You can barely see them, should I say. They are there, but I cannot get in there with the camera to show you where they are, so I'll just do this merely on an illustration. But usually um, on all the other bikes that I've usually worked on, you can see the timing marks. You face it from this angle, and you can see where the timing marks are on sprockets and align them with the head, uh, top of the cylinder head face there, and you know that your timing is bang on, but this is kind of a guesstimation in most words. So can you see that notch there, look? There's the notch, that is pointing up now. And from where I'm looking, it is in line 
with this oil feed here, okay? So now you know, with that top bed centre there, and that notch pointing up, is in line. So your other one, other notch on the, on the exhaust valve, should be pointing towards the tank, all right? Or it should be pointing towards this bolt here, all right? Can you see that? Hopefully you can see it. It's so dark and awkward. So again, the notch is there, all right? That should be pointing towards this. And the other notch, notches, here, should be in line with this oil feed here. That's if you're looking at it from this direction. Okay. I've just aligned this as to top dead center. You can see that timing mark there. If I get that square on, that's roughly in line with that. You see that? Sorry, the light's reflecting. So there we go. You can see that, hopefully, the timing mark there. So to do this, if you've not done this before, I've just got, is it 17 mil? You rotate this round. Obviously there it's disappeared. Rotate this round. The, the spark plugs are out, so it should be quite easy. Oh, we've just gone past it. Bugger. Right, we'll go round again. That's me looking at the camera. Try and go slower. As the cams rotate round, this will get easier and stiffer. Where is it? There it is. So, okay, I'm just going to tap that a little bit just to get in line. Now then, so we've aligned everything up and I've put some more red marks on here just to show you which cams you're going to be checking with the feeler gauges. So we're going to be checking uh, the in, inlet intake here on cylinder 4 and we're going to be checking cylinder 2 intake also. I'll put the marks on there. Marks on there. And on the exhaust side, we're going to be checking cylinders 3 and 4, okay? So I'll put the marks on there which cams you are going to be testing first. Then we're going to rotate this round and we're going to check the other ones, all right? So, okay, so the tolerances for the intake valve clearances need to be between 0 0.10 and 0 0.20, okay? I do this in metrics, I find it a lot easier. And the exhaust side needs to be between 0 0.20 and 0 0.30. So think of it as between 10 and 20 for this and 20 and 30 so they need to be between those marks if it's any lower or if it's close to 20 then it means these need adjusting so don't if you get a measurement of um, these are at 0 0.10 or 10 should we say then don't leave it at that yes it is in spec but because you've got this apart get those valve clearances done because it won't be before long this needs doing again because obviously wearing down so you need to get that adjusted all right um if these are closed up obviously your bike will run like crap or it just won't start um and same with the exhaust side so all right so get them really ideally as close to the the, the largest gap possible um you'll you'll notice that the bike will fire up a hell of a lot easier and run a lot cleaner okay so i i want these ideally to be over uh, 0.15 or 15 should we say and all the intake to be the same and the exhaust valve but seems it's between 0.20 and 30 I want that to be over 0.25 okay right so on this feeler gauge here you might not see the mark it's very pretty worn out 0 0.10 so we'll call it 10 we're just gonna make this simplify this is how we're gonna talk to each other it's a 10 right so what I'm gonna do start with the lowest um, clearance which is 10 and make sure this goes in these that slides in there beautiful so that I can tell that they are greater than 10 I've got that in that cam lobe there all right so that's beautiful I'm gonna go up now to 15 so I'm gonna go up down to 15 if these are at 15 I'll leave it where it is so that 15 doesn't go it doesn't go it goes but it's quite tight 
it won't go in there in fact it's near stuck so they are smaller than really so i've got that. myself a 0.13 millimeter okay or let's say a 13 a 13 i reckon these are th between 13 and 14. that's in there beautiful that's how it wants to feel that's great so these are 13. so they are in spec 13 bang on right so they are in spec but to be honest with you we'll, we'll check everything else as we should and they will be adjusted if need be so i've now got the exhaust one to do so this is a 0.20 the lowest the lowest clearance first that feels like two zero in my experience anything else will not go in there so there there that is definitely two zero i'm not going to try anything else in that i know with experience okay so we've rotated the crank round now and we're going to be taking the clearance measurements on the remaining intake and exhaust valve so we're going to ignore these red marks now because we don't want to be testing those so what i've done i've put a red mark on the one so on the cam um sprocket itself you should get the one mark now pointing up okay pointing up and the mark should be between two pins on your cam chain i've put a red some red paint on there just, just so you can show show you it'll stand out all right all right and down here we have get that out of the way out of the way uh the two mark on the cam low on the cam sprocket that should be level with the top of the cylinder head so i've marked up that pin there if you can see it so that will point at this moment in time towards a pin on the chain and that should be level with the top of the cylinder head if you remember when we rotated it around before it should be between two pins okay but on this time one pin should be level with that head and it should be on the two mark okay so another recap we've got our first mark here is between the cam chain pins and our second mark here is a pin level with the cylinder head top so we've rotated this around now on this side here the notches have disappeared because we've got one notch which is pointing down we can't get to that and you can't even see it so it's useless and we've got the other notch which is pointing towards the bottom of the radiator that's where it's pointing that way that way okay but you can feel that one but you just do not know if that is completely where it should be at all so we're going to go with the marks from here to make sure our top dead center all right so we're going to ignore these red paint marks now because we're going to be measuring the remaining cams let's do it so i've got myself a 20 in my hand we might as well start with exhaust so the end one here Let's see if we can move this torch around a bit better. That feels just like the other one, so we're at 20. We're at 20 with that. 20. Did I get that then? 20. They all feel perfect to me. I'm not going to go any higher than that. So I'm going to take a 13 now, because we always check these with 10. I'm going to take a 13 and see if these intakes are the same as the other ones. So again that feels like 13 that feels like 13 the last ones oh, it feels a little bit tight that one that's 13 very good let's see if i've got it in right that one can i get it from the back that is just i would say 13 just feels a little bit tighter than the other ones but it does go so i'd say they're all 13 then okay now this is crucial you must do this so you need to draw out a plan of your cylinder head and your valve shim uh, thicknesses clearances okay this is worn pretty evenly in this engine i would say it's not had such a hard life this bike so if it, i've never really come across uh, a bike before that has all these worn in the, the same evenness as this has so that's pretty good usually you'll get some are tighter than the others some are more open and you know that this, this has been running incorrectly for some time but enough said about that so i've left these blanks so i'm going to put my place my shims in here when i take them out 
we've got all our clearances down here so we need to make these gaps bigger basically but we can't do that until we get our shims out i'm going to measure our shims that's what we're going to do now so we're going to dismantle this all right all right so i've removed the cam chain tension i'm going to show you the best way to remove this on the bench rather than on the bike because it's, it's so tight in there i can't possibly get a camera in to remove this and i do need both my hands okay so let's take a look so the cam chain tensioner should sit in the bike just like this obviously this is at its full extent now and we'll explain why so this only only should really be out about this much uh, when it's on the bike it should never go to that extent okay if it does that extent you've got no chain there basically all right so what we, first thing we need to do is crack off this 10 mil bolt here you can remove this you can remove this and put that in a safe place then a flat screwdriver if you insert a flat screwdriver in there and turn it clockwise you'll notice the plunger is retracting okay there's a lot of tension on that that feels like a nice healthy spring see that retracting let go of that springs out that's doing its job correctly okay it shouldn't go back it shouldn't rattle so you know this tensioner is in good health for now right so when this is um this is fitted to the bike and what we need to do now is remove this bolt here you can get a tool which will wind this back and it locks into the and guess what I ain't got one okay I could make one I may even try doing that but we've not got one at the moment I've always managed without okay so then you need to slacken off crack off these bolts one whoops stay in there you and two crack them both off so you can loosen them then what you need to do is you need to keep the pressure on this so it's pointing in because when you unscrew these bolts and take it out that plunger is going to push against the pin and push these out it should be fine it shouldn't break or anything like that i know on the earlier uh, rmz's they were pretty pretty brittle with these so they used to crack and shear off uh, almost very easily but this is quite much more thicker than those bikes so what you can do is wind this back just enough so it sits away from the pin and that can be locked off then these should come out pretty easy okay and you can pull your tensioner away but failing that if you are struggling to wind that back and all it costs you do need uh, it's, it's very tight in there what I would do is unscrew these a little bit, a few mil, and then take out one, mostly the bottom one. Take out one completely. This may then start to pitch at one angle like that. And then what you can do is just simply undo that one with applying pressure to the cam chain tensioner. So you need to apply pressure to that, push that in so it doesn't try to bend on its way out. And they can take the other bolt out if you catch my drift and then this should eventually after a few turns this should eventually just pull away clear and there you have it so that can just go away for now we'll put all these pieces where they should be keep it safe put him over there right back to the bike right so all of these are 10 mil bolts uh, you may need a small one to get to the back there, whatever you've got in your toolbox because it's quite tight on some of these back ones. Slacken them all off till they're kind of finger tight and they should be able, you should be able to pull them out. Uh, I usually leave the centre ones tighter so I can get all these out first and the centre ones should push this up because there will be some tension on it and you will notice when you start loosening some of these bolts off that some of them will become tight again because there is some pressure pushing up here come away just like that All right, let's get these valve buckets out. So you're gonna need a magnet. I've got a magnet on the end of this torch. It's good enough to 
pop these out simply all you have to do is catch it like that pull it out and your valve shim should be in the top like that if you can't see it here it is it might be stuck with oil so there we have our valve shim okay this one has a number on it luckily it's not worn off it is a 178 you won't be able to see that there i'll get you a, a closer look at it in a minute 178 that says on there fuck all right for this next test you're going to need either a micrometer or a vernier caliper okay i don't use a digital vernier calipers and i always use metric tools metric micrometer it's a lot easier to use okay uh, i'm going to describe this next task uh, procedure in a way that you will understand it better try and make things simplified and easier for you to understand if you're not an engineer or if you're not familiar with the mechanical engineering terms all right doing the valve clearances and measuring these shims is very easy i see many many people get this wrong or they have the stupid conversion charts this and other you don't need conversion charts it's quite quite simple it's only like counting pennies i'm going to show you the easy way to do this all right okay so here we have a metric micrometer a metric micrometer um on the thimble, this is called a thimble on the metric micrometer, you can see this zero. This looks like millimetres, doesn't it? It looks like millimetres. It looks like 5 mil, 10 mil, 15 mil, and all that, but it isn't. This is in microns. This is actually a hundredth. Each one of these lines represents a hundredth, or 100 microns. Okay. Um, so I'm going to simplify how to use one of these so you can get your correct valve clearance. So if I wind this out, we've got millimetres on the top. I'll get this right out so I can show you. So up here we have millimetres. Each one of those lines represents one millimetre. And below here is 0.5 of a millimetre. Okay. I've got one millimetre, two millimetre, five millimetre, and these lines are 0.5. Now, this barrel here, sorry, this thimble, as it's called, as you rotate that round, there's numbers up on here counting down. Look, we'll take it right to zero. So if I rotate this round fully from zero right back to zero again, it's now moved 0.5 of a millimeter. Okay, we've not got a full millimeter on there. As you can see, it's moved 0.5. I move it around again. You can see that 0.5 mark there just appearing on this. I move that, rotate that round fully again. We have now moved this one millimeter. Okay, that's one complete millimeter. So, what we need to do now <clears throat> is grab our valve shim our valve shim this is the 178 I'll just tighten that down there so that is our 178 okay that measures 178 in there now how do I know this measures 178 when it doesn't say 78 on here it looks like it says 25, 26, 27, 28, doesn't it? 28. Well, how we do that is like this here. So we rotate this round again all the way to 0.5. That's one rotation, 0.5, half a millimetre, all the way around again. That's one millimetre. Or whole one complete. We rotate this round again. We now have 1.5 millimeter. Okay. We rotate this round to 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26, 27, 28. Okay. That gives us our size our correct size so if we go right back again <clears throat> we'll do this a different way zero 
all the way around 0.5 all the way around again that's one mil all right so 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 40 45 50 50 or 0.5 okay 50 55 60 65 70 75 76 77 78 you catch my drift okay 78 so we want to deduct seven from that valve shim 77 76 75 74 73 72 71 all right that is the thickness we want our valve shim to be in order to get our correct clearance all right so if our valve um clearance is 0.13 or 13 all you do is count up and deduct the number 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 or 0 0.20 okay we're getting rid of the decimal point to make it simple we need to deduct seven seven or 700 microns seven of these little marks from this measurement to get our correct valve shim thickness so, okay so we want a 171 in there or 170 would possibly do it all right so if i use this in a different manner now let's have a look right so i've got my valve um valve i've got my feeler gauges here very faint the writing so we've got our 0.13 on there. Can this camera focus? Please focus on it. Now it looks stupid. You can just see 0.13. There we go. Okay. And this one, the bent one, 0 0.20. This is the correct thickness for what we need on our, our uh, valve clearance. Okay. We want it to be 0 0.20. But the minute. We can only get this in. It's kind of 13, 14, as we call it. So, if I set this down, clamp this down, rotate this barrel, there, okay? So that is now on 0.13 or 13. Where's that mark? You can just see that mark there, okay? So that is 0.13. We take that out. Our 20 or 0 0.20 will not go in that gap. So we need to make that gap bigger. So what I'm going to do here, you watch these lines go. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven all right seven now this should go in there and it does just like that that's how we do uh, the valve shim measurements okay vernier okay so this is our vernier um it works in a similar way but each and one of these lines on here instead of going up in uh, one hundredth, this is a two hundredth or something. So this is each one of these lines in here is two hundred microns. Okay, so as the full rotation on the um, micrometer was 0 0.5, half a rotation from zero to zero on this represents one millimeter. So we're going to move this to one millimeter. All right. very sensitive so it's a bit of a bugger so that has moved to one mil you can see that mark on the scale there one millimeter so we want this now to do go to 1.78 so there 
just around about there. So 1.78. Where's our valve shim? This is our 1.78 valve shim, which goes in there. 1.78. That's what we've got, okay? So from zero, we have on the scale uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 2, 4, 6, 8, 20. Okay? That's how these go up on the vernier. Not as accurate as a micrometer, um, but works in a similar way. So we want to, we've actually got a valve shimmer of 170. That slots in there beautifully. Knock that down. 1.70. I can use this valve shim to get our correct thickness, our correct clearance, okay? That's how that works. I'll put that back where it needs to be. Alright, so this is a like I said, this is a bit of a naff one, it's not very accurate. Oh it's not bad, it's it's zero itself nicely there. Alright, let's do a little bit of maths, okay? Let's do a bit a little bit of maths to get these valve shim clearances correct all right so i'm going to do you an example so we've got a gap of 0 0.13 on our inlet okay 0 0.13 millimeters and our gap needs to be 0 0.20 millimeters all right but we're going to ignore the decimal points just to make it simple so we want to achieve a gap of 20 let's just say a gap of 20 but we've got 13 okay our gap is 13. Now, our valve shim thickness currently um, on our number four cylinder inlet is 1.70 millimeter valve shim. That's what it measures at. Or let's just say 170. So we need to put a smaller valve shim in there. Put a smaller valve shim to achieve our 0 0.20 or our 20. So what if we put a valve shim of 169 in there? If we put a valve shim of 169, is that going to give us our clearance? It won't. We're just taking one off, aren't we? We're just deducting one. So that will give us a clearance of 1.4. Not good enough. So what if we put a 168 in there? A 168 valve shim. That's going to give us a clearance of... 0.15 isn't it, isn't it? Almost snap a pencil then. That is going to give us a clearance of 0.15 millimeter, which we don't want. So if we put a 163 in there, if we deduct seven from that, we put a valve shim thickness valve shim of one bloody hell, not three of a 163 valve shim, okay, just like that. That will give us our clearance of 20. We're dropping seven from this valve shim here to give us our clearance of 20. That's simply how you do it. All right. So now on my little illustration, my cleverly drawn illustration of my uh, cylinder head, I've got my valve shim thicknesses. Okay. So here it wrote down here is the thicknesses of the shims, the current shims I have and, in, on, and here, Here's the thicknesses that I need, okay? Um, you can swap these around, so I've ordered some valve shims. I've ordered some, and you can swap these around. So I want, this one's a 178, I want it to be a 171. I can swap that with a 170 or a 172, okay? That'll not give me my 100% correct clearance. If I put that, that 172 shim in there, it'll bring it in spec, that is going to leave that clearance, valve clearance, to uh, 0.19, isn't it? That's where it'll leave it. If I put that 170 valve shim in there, then that will give us a clearance of 0.21, wouldn't it? So it's slightly bigger. It won't make an incredible amount of difference, but um, if I continue that path and swap these valve shims around, which you can do to get these in spec, if I swap them all around, I'm not going to get a 100% accurate clearance throughout all these cams. 
what I want to achieve is getting a 100% clearance, all these valve clearances to be the same. That is what I do. So you may find <clears throat> when you have a box of shims or you want to order some valve shims, you cannot get the desired size. They go up in fives mostly. So you might not find a 172 or, a, sorry, you might not find a 171. Uh, you will get a 172 because obviously we've got one in there. You might not find a 171. You might not find a 17, uh, a 166 or 163, 162. You might not find them. So how can you achieve that correct clearance without putting new valves in all this bollocks? Um, to get that correct clearance, we're going to do a simple hack. All right. What I'm going to do is take my 500 grit or at least 600 grit sandpaper. We're going to turn this valve shim over so that the number side is pointing down and I'm simply going to sand it. And this is what I do. Okay, I press down hard. It needs to be on a flat surface. Press down so you're not pitching it around. Just go around in circles. If you go around in circles, you're more guaranteed to get a nice even layer. If you go side to side like that, you might just bevel the edge of it. You might put a a chamfer on it and not get it correct so I'm going to go around in circles just to make sure I'll figure of eights like this and I'm going to re-measure it with our micrometer okay this one is the 178 I'm just put this in place this in here just a second so this this was the 178 it's now 177 okay 177 if I keep sanding that it's a long way to go to get this to 171 when I have a 172 valve shim I can just use that one take a uh, 100 microns off it but this is for demonstration only so I'm sanding that down all right Let's see what we've got. Sorry, I'm dropping that. There we go. 176. Okay. 176. Nearly. So I could keep going with that. Um, right down to 171 or something it's a bit daft really because uh, it's a long way to go but like I said if I take a 172 from here if I take that 172 it's not Okay, there you go, 172. All I need to do, pull him out. All I need to do is take 0.1 off that, and that will be my desired thickness. So I'm going to sand this one down, the number side down, so it doesn't confuse anybody. I'm going to sand this one down. To get this to 171, I'm going to use this shim for my clearance, alright? Depending on what sandpaper you have, it might take a while. All that number's gone off there now. Sorry. So we've now got just under but 171 on there okay so that now can go here that shim is ready to go back in the bike and that will give us our clearance on that cam all right so we need to work on the rest of them get these to spec and then we can move on so what i'm going to do is because some of these want like a great these want a great number off we need to deduct uh 
quite a lot from these. I'm not going to sand, spend all day sanding every one of them down. We really, we really do need to get some of these ordered. So I'm going to order a set and, and I'll just sand down which ones I feel are necessary. Okay, we don't want to be spending all day sanding all these down at all. When uh, like 30 quid or something like that, I can get all these bell shims. It'll save me some time. Or I could be a tight sod and be very patient and sand all these down <clears throat> and then get, that, get our correct clearance. But uh, right, I'm going to get these shims ordered. And then uh, we'll get those clearances done. But we will, I will sand down the ones that I need to to get the desired clearance to get me get more accurate. You will notice a difference, a massive difference in the performance of your bike if you get these valves all even. Okay. Um, other thing is, don't mix these up. Obviously, we've taken that one from there. Make sure you keep these safe. Um, if, as long as you've wrote them down. As long as you wrote them all down, it doesn't matter if you, if you knock that over or anything like that. You don't really need them to be set out in order now because we've got that we've got our clearances wrote down. But if you do knock these over or something like that, then you're obviously going to have to measure every single one of them. So, right then, let's get it cleared up. Right, that's all for part one. So check out part two and you'll watch me get these valve shims in. We'll check the clearances again and get his bike assembled back on the road. So check out part two. All right.